Bailey is like with earth and pot, in the hands of a great porter, Ray returns to play. Arise in the land of the living, the Apoogie, Banner Bantu production. Yakubi Banner Bantu, Mutoto Wa Kibantu, Banner Bermuntu. Banner Bermuntu. Kimbo, Kimbo, Tata Nanzambi, Yamazulu, Mpungu Tulendo, So Nini na Nini Somandla, Gai Murungu, Mwene Nyaga. Depending on where you are, I greet you. Nusiemi, Betoa Bumbote, Bana Bayi Solele. Molweni, Abantwana, Abangoni. Sawubona, Abantwana, Babao, Weto, Oswe Mazuluini. Moriaga shana shangai na kenda moyoru. Mpo salama watoto wa mungu. Depending on where you are, as I said, I greet you. Yes, it's that time we sit and rightly divide the word of truth. And whose truth are we dividing? That is the most important question, but I bet for. Because the most appalling thing I've heard is when one of your own terms, they are people uncivilized. Just because you've integrated into the Western system. Embo is where it began. Embo is where it will end. Let's get right into it, Banabeto. Contrary to popular belief, my people, Africa has had more than 8,000 years of recorded civilization, especially in the Nile Valley, whose source begins in the south of the African continent. Yes, South Africa, Jerusalem, Ikalayame. In this case, civilization refers to organized communities with governance structures, knowledge systems, cities, agriculture, medicine, and writing systems, you know, what you would consider to be what, the infrastructure of an organized community. Among the classical documents that I've encountered by Naveto, which is more than 4,500 years old on medicine and healing arts, was developed during the dynastic Kemet period. For example, the Kahun Papari, 1900 BCE, refers to medical information initially written by Amhetep during the third dynasty. Twenty seven hundred BCE, the ancient Egyptians themselves, Banaveto, claimed that they had archetypes come from the southmost part of Africa. And a recent genetic study here, yeah, because we are we are very interested in the genetics right now, confirm this assertion from the mummies. Ancient Africans recognized Ra or Isitunzi. Umbilini, is it Tunzi, which correspond to Chi and Prana and refer to the energetic life force in Asian cal cultures. The Shu and Tefnut, or if you prefer in the Bantu tongue, Nkomo we Loandle, Nkomo we Loandle, and Dugamanzi. So these are not 
they were never strange or new concepts to us. If at all, those that articulated this concept got them from us and uh, here is proof. This correspond to uh, Welwandle and Dungamanzi correspond to the yin and yang or the purusha and the parakriti in the Asian cultures, which are the natural principles of a polarized duality in the existence of Muntu. The jing or the ujas, the physical, psycho, uh, phys sorry, physiological essences and wuxing or pacha tava, the five elements and modes of nature and their relationship with the zang and the fu, the five vital organs and the physical organs respectively also found the application in Bantu cosmologies. So all that uh, Chinese meditation, all that medicine, uh, as you would like to believe that it had its origins in the East. But think again. Bantu systems are based on the concept of consciousness. That is Sa or Ntu, where you get the soul and its consciousness, Bantu, the conscious soul of Muntu, and the life force life force energy, Ra. That is why even among the Agikoyo, we say Kerera, what I'm giving you is Kerera. The word that has the life force, the life energy in it. These cosmological concepts are predated upon Paut Neteru and Amadogo. A friend then is South African, and they will tell you what Amathogo means the archetypal forces that prescribes properties to everything Kintu, Muntu, Vantu, Muntu, Mundu. The emergence of human civilizations in the Nile Valley of ancient King Gipiti, originally known as. Tau, Taui, and later Kemet. Taui, that's where you get the Taoists. An ancient Nubia called Taseti and Tanahisi, when we were handling the uh, Bantu Akhenaten connection, we talked of Tana, tas, Tanaseti, Taseti and Tanehisi in modern day Sudan. Therefore, today's class is informed by both ancient Isintu, which is basically the Protonguni, and the Kemet relationship. Evidence and sources, because we always want to treat this awakening like an academic exercise, yet it's not. It's about the reawakening of the Muntu consciousness to tip the scale so that we can have a uniformity in the power of one, the power of he who was, is, and is to come, who the keepers in, it's only, Fair because we're looking at South Africa, who the keepers in the South call so Nini na Nini, Somandla, yes, the mighty one. Those in the Antotela know him as Tatana and Zambi, Yamazulu, Mpungu Tulendo, yes, the one that is coming with the reign of peace, Kwa Tulendo. And we in the East know him as Ngai, Morungu, Mwenenyaga, yes, the great I am, who is the giver of light. And I've been on that mountain, Banaveto. And I had you to go to that mountain. Right. 
Evidence comes from the sources, including the mummies of Tutankhamen. We've looked at Tut, uh, Tutankhamen and his grandparents, King Amenhotep and Queen Stia, that is the 18th dynasty, autosomal DNA and the Y Halpo groups. I always insist I'm no geneticist. So somewhere in there, you might want to expand your research on that, but I'm just giving you what is relevant to my teaching. The Y Halpo group testing of royal mummies from the 18th dynasty, including Pharaoh Ramses III, who was in the 20th dynasty and his family, are reported to be sub-Saharan Africa. Hmm? Testing results reveal that these royals belong to the EM2, formerly E1B1A Harpo group, demonstrating that they shared common ancestry with peoples of Southern Africa, the sons and daughters of Munguni. Today, the EM2 Harpo group is predominantly found among modern day Isintu speaking people of Africa, Abantu and more in Southern Africa, Jerusalem, Ikalayame, as it was over 5,000 years ago in King Gipiti. Those pharaohs that were ruling in Egypt, King Gipiti, they were Bantus. Take it to the bank. But they want, us, they want you to think that because King Gibiti was the center of our civilization. We are so disconnected from that, that we have to think of the Egyptian civilization as a different part of Africa. And that is where most of us are lost. Concepts, concepts and, uh, and principles have been termed as gods. You know, the Mundele has thrown out your information there in bits and pieces made it so confusing that unless you walk with the ancestors, it will always seem like mumble jumbo. And our minds have been programmed that everything, everything, can you imagine this is, this is what really beats me. Everything you know about your creator, you're relying on a book, you're relying on this book. Everything you know about your creator, you're relying on a book given to you by your enslaver to know the one who was, is, and is to come. Is that logical? How many books are there? And because the divinity of this one has been encoded in your, quote, unquote, and I mean divinity of this one has been encoded in your subconscious mind, you will not look at any other literature. It is the word of God. Yet you will not acknowledge texts that predate this book. How awakened are we? How can you be awakened? You're still lying on the same bed. And claim a grand rising. I just, I just don't get it. I just don't get it. The evidence is collaborated by anthropological findings that mention a sacred society call. Now this is going to be very interesting. Bona abakulu abasekemu. Bona abakulu abasekemu the ancient ones of Kemet. Why is South Africa talking of the ancient ones of Kemet? Why are South African sages talking of the ancient ones of Kemet? Why are Gikuyu sages speaking of the ancient ones of Kemet? Why are Yoruba sages speaking of the ancient ones of Kemet? And you're there speaking of Paul, John, Mark, Luke, who could only write a book in the third person. Die, the other young guy die. May your minds be led to the place they were conditioned not to go, Vanaveto. Because it pains me. It pains me. When you drop information, when you drop knowledge on sons and daughters of Muntu, and they tell you, but it's not recorded in the Bible. 
And the one that is arguing has only even read the 66 books. And that is all they know about their divinity. The same book that tells you the law is written in your heart, then why do I need to consult what is written in my heart in some text? Because I remember in school, if you committed something to memory and you had an exam, a test, unless it was an open book, you did not refer to the source because it was, I don't know if you get the logic, but Vanabeto, I'm at that point, I, I cannot argue some of these things. I can just teach because those who know must teach. I can just come to this screen and present what has been given to me by the Most High to present to you, Bernadette. But I will not go into conflict. I will not argue in the enslaver's tongue. I will not argue over the enslaver's books. I will not argue. I will only use the primordial consciousness that I've been allowed to connect to for this understanding breaking down whatever they have and finding out their lies. Because as Mfumu Kimbangu would have said, read the book and you'll catch the thief. Don't read the book to believe in the thief. Right. So the Bona Abakulu Abasekemu, the ancient ones of Kemet or King Gibiti, are found in the Limpopo and Zambezi river valleys of South Africa. Yes, they do exist. Mozambique, Zambia, Zimbabwe. Members of this society are reported to be the blood relative of ancient King Gibiti. Therefore, it is accepted that sub-Saharan Africans from various regions built the Nile Valley civilization and they returned to their respective ancient homes after the fall of Kemet during the first century BCE. So what am I saying? Kemet was the melting pot of all the Bantu wisdom. That is why you would find it recorded in one spot because everything that we had from the various regions was oral history written in our hearts. We did not need some book to tell us of our taboos. We did not need a book to tell us what to do because we were spiritually connected. But every time we interact with this race, because colonization is not the first time we interacted with this race, they had been there. My people know them as Nguondune or the Knights Templars, you call them whatever, yes, those, the Crusaders. My people have fought them, ask, ask those, the, uh, the, 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 the Meru, they'll talk of the, the, the battle, Akzum the fighting Kabiru, because they are basically, two, uh, if we take the Kikuyu, there are two kinds of Kikuyu. There's Mogekoyo, Karinga. That is the one that did not live for King Gipiti. And there's Mogekoyo, Kafiro, the Habiru. He left the mountain and took his information. As far as the land of the Khazars, and the Ashkenaz, the Bantu has never been limited. You doubt, well, do a genealogical study on the Hopi people. Thy are the young guy thy. Cosmology is the basis. Now we get into the technical Mundele terms, just to break it down. Cosmology is the basis of the worldview of reality held by a group of people. It is informed by their onotology or way of being. In turn, cosmology informs people's actions and ways of relating to their environment. Various African nations have a, uh, have a unique cosmology that represents the understanding of human beings beyond the human body. And this is why I want, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a precursor to what I'm about to present. So bear with me, Panabeto. 
both the ancient Kemet and Bantu people of Southern Africa conceived of the human as a multidimensional entity comprised of nine core faculties beyond the body. Mm -hmm. The full being was made up of a subtle identity, which is the emotional body, the personality, the mind, the bioenergetics, will, and consciousness. That was the view of the ancient Kemetic as a, uh, the complete human. The cart represents the physical body of flesh and blood. Animating the physical body is the kaibit. Chai, 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 chai. Where have you had that line? Well, that word. Yes, you know, those of us who have studied Yiddish and um, that, you understand that the Hebrew word for life is chai. But when I come to Kemet, I see kaibit and khat, representing the flesh and blood. And these correspond to the bioenergetic field. So there is the biology in you, but then there's the energy, the life force, the car, if you prefer. This is considered to be the abode of the life force, Ra. which corresponds to Ki and Prana in China and India, respectively. And my attention right now is to Sub-Saharan Africa. The Ka is personality, the false ego. The Ren is the name and the identity. Then there's the Sahu, those who've been studying um, Kemetic sciences. And Ab represent the lower brain function and the higher mental faculties respectively. The Baku Shechem complex represents the highest aspects of the human being, where the Ba, Ba, B-A, stands for the concept of the soul conscience, and Ak is the abode of consciousness. Ba'antu, Ba'antu. It's not rocket science. The ancient healing system was holistic and integrative, my people, body, soul, and mind. Addressing the physical body, yes, the life force, the mind, soul, and consciousness. The Bantu of South Africa had a very, and still have a very similar corresponding cosmonic addressing the similar aspects of the human whole human, what am I talking about? Have a look at this. It's seen to illustration of a complete Mtu. He would have to have Mtu. Undongo. Ubuti bentongo. Which loosely translated is the poison of sleep. The Amandla, that's why you hear me saying Somandla. Amandla, the power. Ubuti Pemuntu. Ubuti Pemuntu. Ubuti Pesilo, the poison of the beast, the lower animal mind. Ubuti Pemuntu, the, the, the higher mind, the, the, the Muntu mind. Then the Ena, then Isitunzi, which would translate to shadow or image or dignity, is it don't, is, don't, don't rain on my parade, don't put shed, don't put a shadow. Because it's used particularly where sunlight is blocked. Then there was the Ogama. That's why uh, any South African will tell you I'm from the clan of Igama Igwebi. Then there was the Mzimba, the body. I 
cannot make this stuff up. Just visit any Sanusi or Sangoma worth worthy of the title. And then we tell you this concept. Because to be a healer, this is what they teach you. And that is why a lot of what we do, most people do not understand that the spirit or the mind can heal the body. But what do I mean? Prophets and holy men from time in memorial have attempted to teach us how to transcend the lower animal part of the self and attain to the divinity that is our essential nature and the state to which we are on a journey of return. It is also what those of Bonabakulu Abba Sekemu teach. I will not at all be surprised if one, the one, born Yeshua ben Yosef, later to be known as Jesus Christ, a member of the sins, I'm not talking about Isaiah, I'm talking about Aya, Savior. It has nothing to do with you, it has nothing to do with us. One not also a member of the aforementioned Bonabakulu Abbasikim brotherhood that however that however is speculation which is not speculation because its adept exists in the african continent that's why we uh, we know that a black man was killed in cindy C. yesaya for speaking the truth And where have we had who like Isaiah performed what the initiated could do? Hmm? Miracles. I put it to you, Banabeto. As he did, so can you. But cognitive dissonance and they will never allow it. Muntu is on a journey, the goal of which is union with the source of his being, the Itongo. That is the reason of the purpose of this awakening. To reach that goal, he must first pass through all experiences the cosmos afford and must shake off all assertions accumulated on his descent. You hear that? Cognitive, must shake off all assertions accumulated on his descent from individualized spiritual mind into gross set matter. To do this, he is born and born again. For his physical body dies as so do his lower mental principles, the, the lower animal mind. Only his higher mental principles, which are akin with the intongo, itongo, survive individually, bestowed upon them at its opening. The brotherhood, now, to focus on the Bonakulu Abasekemu, the South Africans, our brothers and sisters in South Africa, know of a king and a sage who was called Mankanyenzi, I urge you to go research him. That's M A N K A N Y E Z I, Mankanyezi. And uh, the others, because if whatever is written of him in history, you'll also find the uh, interaction with a Maasai sage, what uh, 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 someone from a community in East, Eastern Africa is, was doing with uh, someone in a South African community and 
this was being recorded by um, uh, the first Mundele scholars to arrive, then that should raise very pertinent questions. The name may be tendered in English as the Briar Brotherhood of the Higher Ones of King Gipiti. The Brotherhood was founded in King Gipiti in the reign of Pharaoh, the great house of Kyops. Or Kyops, its founder being a priest of Isis. Remember, I have told you, Isis has nothing to do with a god or it's a concept, it's an energy what my people call Njadi. The Nile is nourished by Ronyondorwa Jadi, which that is loosely translates to the breast of Isis. Well, calm down, calm down. There is none to be worshipped. Save so nini na nini somandla tata na nzambi yamazulu mpungu tulendo so nini na nini somandla. But he did create certain forces, certain energies to keep the balance and to keep the continuity of his creation. All our ancestors did, they studied these energies and what you do not understand you will definitely want to put a title to. And if somebody is receiving that information, that hard, they will also want to put a title to, according to the understanding. That is why thought becomes thought. Yes, you'd think that thought was an actual God, but it was actually, they don't even see thought and thought. But I'm not going into the hermetics of it. It has, and get this, it has as its objects, the spreading of the wisdom which comes from the old among all races and tribes in Africa. And the study and practice by its members of what we call Ukwazi kwezi, uh, ukwazi kwezi siba kwezi tabango, ukwazi, ukwazi kwezi tabango, ukwazi kwezi tabango. I should have separated, no wonder I didn't miss. Ukwazi, ukwazi kwezi tabango, which means that science depends on the power of thought, your thought process, you create with your mind. You speak with your tongue and it comes into existence. It's not that hard. The implication is clear that the traditional religions, better spiritual sciences, we don't religio because it was of Africa derive from one, Abantu, which is Kamit, which means black. And this is a tradition that informs the spiritual traditions of the Zulu, as we have seen, but also now well known the spiritual of the Yoruba, the Dogon, the Wolof, the Akan people, the immortals, among many other African nations from the West and Central parts of Africa, as well as the South. Evidently, there's substantial gene flow, not only the flow of ideas, but the, we claim a cultural inheritance, but also genetic descent. from the Kamau, the people of Kamit. Those of us, Bonabakulu, Abasekemu, are found in every tribe and nation throughout great African continent and indeed beyond.
as legend, uh, we've talked about the South African king and sage of the Bona Abakulu, Aba, Abasikemu order called. There were two of them actually, the sages. There was Mandlanga and Mankanyezi. I would cover them as a topic of on their own because it's quite vast. Who articulated the cosmology linked to Uluazi Iwe Mkabango, or knowledge of the heart, mind, from the northern land of their brother, King Kufu of the fourth dynasty. The 13 sources I found all correlated to this. And as much as we may want to sit and play church, our truth is playing right before us, Banabeto. And it is important for us to understand that the physical realm that we are in, it, is, it mirrors the spiritual realm. And this relationship is embodied in what they would want to believe you as, they, they've tried to make you believe is a satanic or an ideology that generates from mass tema, but this kingdom has no originality. They can only copy what is in existence. And we are setting it right, taking out their lies guided by the ancestors. And this is going to really interest you. Now, there's a relationship that uh, we call the law of analogy, or what you know as, as above, so is it below. And this law states that <coughs> the macro microcosmic order and the animate and inanimate things within it's evolved from the one or the good. And the mother thereof is the moon, ma, Maya, and the father thereof is the son, Ra. In short, Mara or Maria, Black Madonna. You see these concepts, they never understood these concepts. Would mean the union of the moon and the sun, Mara, Mara. You've heard of the Maasai Mara. Which generates the tau tau, or what the Greek would call Thoth Hamis, the personification of the first cause, Ta in King Gibbity, if you prefer, which is symbolized by the sun disk mounted on a moon crescent, resting on the head of a baboon squatting on a cube. But what is this cube? Do not, let, let, uh, let not the, um, symbolism throw you off because I try to break this down and connect it. Like uh, uh, recently on the community page, we talked about the Pleiades. The Pleiades also plays into this because it's all connected. The cosmology, the cosmology, the astrology, the physiology, it's all connected and becomes one. That is why we call it the power of one. In African thought, the visible reality emanated from eternity. You know, the continuity, the life force, which is symbolized by the bull and the seven cows. One plus seven would naturally be eight. And eight, you flip it, that symbolizes eternity. There's nothing new the Mundele is teaching us. You know, the number eight also represents eight primal principles of matter, which emanated from the great mother located at the center of the universe. They'll never want you talking about the great mother, but then they'll always tell you about mother earth. 
you know? The seven cows, Heturi of heaven, manifest themselves with the seven Pleiades. Kelemela, stars which mark the beginning of summer and the African New Year in September. Does not the Bantu calendar begin in September? And this is not just information that we stumbled upon. It was no coincidence that Yaya Robert Headley and the calendar group would arrive to the same conclusion that the Bantu New Year is in September. And how is this? We knew of this, we, we, we had this information, but nobody was there to break it down for us. Not until we were pointed in that direction in this age of consciousness. So what am I saying, Benito? The seven cows, the Heturi of heaven manifest themselves with the seven ladies, the Kelemela stars, which mark the beginning of summer and the African New Year in September. These seven cows, Banabeto, are also symbolized by a seven-headed serpent. Get this. Or seven-branched light menorah. You see where they get that concept, which is represented by two interlocking or interpenetrating triangles, which are called the nutra or the ntura. Ntura comes to tura, tura, creates, creates, exists. Otoro, the tula. You understand this, Panabeto? Which the two interlocking or interpenetrating triangles or the nutra or ntura correspond to the yin and yang. The interaction of the negative nut on two and positive ra produced the triune principle tau tau mankara. Or what the Greek wanted to call tomitage, which created 12 macrosomic quote unquote gods through a process of transformation and adaptation, these celestial bodies constitute of the macrosmic universe. Now this is the deep stuff. The cube, the Kaaba or the ancient pillar contains the totality of being, which we must unpack in order to understand the nature of reality. Now this is where I wish to pay attention because this is the bulk of this lesson. The cube, water, Manu, Ba, Bau, the thought, the soul, fire, Akut, come spirit, Ath, Rastau, Ea, Amenti. So we can say the ancient pillar would be Kaaba Chat, which would be the Kaaba. Kaaba is the cube. Eh? And how do you get the, the, the cube? The cube is triangles and all that. This is, I wish not to confuse you at this point. Uh, we have an advanced class that I break this down and that is for initiates only. And you, welcome to join the class, if at all you're willing to forget everything you know and learn anew. Water, Manu, Kabachat, Mundu, Ita, the black goo, or what you call dark matter. There's the Manu, water, there's Aket, fire, there's Rastu earth and there's a minty air. That is why when you listen to the Hopi um, prophecy, they talk of the four guardians. The white race was given guardianship of a fire. The black race was given guardianship of a water. The yellow race was given guardianship of a earth. Uh, and, then, and then there was another that was given guardianship of a, yeah, the elements, you call them the elements, they've always been, part of us, and that is Kabashat, Manu, Achet, Rastu, and Amenti. 
both the cube, the Kaaba, and the ancient pillar, Zind Kafura, consists of four elements. That is water, fire, earth, and air. The fifth element is ether or quintessence called Mundu or Kabachat, the dark matter, Omba. And the fifth element consists of Ka, the force, Ba, the soul, Kat, the life-giving force, Kabachat, Mu, plus the soul becomes Mundu, Mu plus the Ntu becomes Muntu, Mu plus the mm -hmm becomes Muhu. And for our South African kings and queens, it becomes Motho. Mind plus thought plus word equals the higher self. You need the mind liberated. You need the thought, and then you need to articulate the word to attain a higher self. Are we together, Vanavid? I know I'm going to get a lot of questions for this one. I repeat that. The mind, the thought, and the word bring us into the higher self. That is the spirit, the soul, and reason. The essential quality of the human personality is called Ubuntu, Ubuntu, or Bodho. The quintessential quality of the human personality is what we call Ubuntu. Ubuntu, Ubuntu, Gabantu. The ethereal or the equisential quality of the human personality. I know I'm throwing a lot of Mundele words, but it's the only language they taught me how, the, 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 it's the only language that can allow me to bring this to you because if I start speaking uh, the ancient tongues or any other tongue, then the whole exercise would be defeated. So bear with me. This ethereal or quintessential quality of human personality is also shared by the word or intelligence of the unknown and unknowable Ngai, Dao Dao, Makatra, or Usamatra, Usaramat, and Ra, Usaramatra, Menmatra, Nubamatra, Dao Mat, Dao Kaba Chat, then you go to Mundu, Muntu, Munhu, Motho, and the higher self. What are we saying? That our higher self and you're going to love this the inner human personality the divine spark the guy within or indwelling spirit. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Is consubstantial with the universe word or intelligence of the unknown and unknowable guy. Hence the African sage, Tao Tao Harama, or what the Greek would call Thoth Hermes, said that the deceased are immortal gods and the living are mortal gods. You understand this concept of the dry and wet spirits. Remember, the, 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 the cube consists, uh, and if, if we were to look at the cube, I don't know, if you look at the Congo keyword, it's separated into four. How many sides does a cube have? Now, there are things that we have been allowed to end. They would never allow us to teach, but I try to break it down. First of all, what you call the cross. 
the Karao monogram, or Keru is the Jewish Kerubim and the Islamic Al-Karibuyan. In the edition, indigenous African theology, it's called Karaisam, the doctrine of the divine, divine light. The Karao Greek Kiro monogram is the foundation of principle of theology. The Karite theology is embodied in the Sphinx or ink symbol, also known as the Bemben, Latin Bambino stone, which represents the primal God's child. The Sphinx is the only earthly symbol of the African mystery God. And the one of the mystery religion known as Jahu. Hmm? <laughs> uh, the entire theology of the African Sphinx God, Yahweh or Jah, popularly known as Jehovah, is embodied in the Keru, Jewish Keru, and Islamic Al Karibuyan, which comprises of P, the, the God Cube on the ancient pillars, four beasts, where the throne of Guy, which symbolizes the four winds, get this, the four cardinal points, the four rudders of heaven, the four gods, which preside over the four quarters of the world, the four corners of the world. The four spirits, Uderi, Javi, Nakeiho. Or what? And get this, they would call Osiris, Isis, and Heru. They are not gods. The bull of heaven, Yao or Ya, divided itself into 14 parts corresponding to the seven Pleiades star and the seven outer planets, which culminated into the universal word of intelligence called Tau Tau Harama, or the Greek thought Hamis, or whatever you call thought, who created the cube, the Kaaba, Kabaka. That's where you get the name titled Kabaka King from the Kaaba or the ancient pillars, which means the Kabaka means that my, I, I am rooted in the pillar of Ka, the life force. There's a lot of wisdom in these words, if at all we are willing to look at it. We say Ngai is unknown and unknowable. But the first manifestation of Ngai took the form of the 10, prim 10 primal principles of being, which culminated in the great mother. The mother generated the son, or Kara, who became known as the Karana or Harana. The son Karana Harana is symbolized by the three stars of the Orion belt, also known as Nendemba or Nendomba, Maklobeng, Luonde, or Ulundi i.e. the place of the pigs. Are you getting this? The great mother and her son came to be known as the black Madonna. The son was the true principle. You remember, if, if you've been following that, and I hope you've been reading the community page because it will really help you connect with what I'm saying. The son was the true principle. Yeah, you wanted us to get deep, so we go deep. The principle which became the foundation of the law of generation, which says, in a right angle triangle, the square on, on the, or the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares on the other two sides. And what is the law of the squares? Usara, Horu, Osiris, Ra, and Maat. So be very careful, Banabeto. When knowledge puffs you up, when you read these Mundele books and they give you a very confused and diluted version of the truth. And let me bring it home. The affinity between guy, nature, and the human personality. The great mother manifested herself as wisdom, Sophia, 
We've talked of that. That uh, when we, uh, the uh, for those in the Hebrew roots, you will understand when I speak of death, which is the knowledge, or you can use the um, Strong's Concordance. And then there's the wisdom, Sophia. So the great mother manifested herself as wisdom. That is why I'm always telling Banabeto, Credo Mutua was always telling, awaken the mother mind. Which is symbolized by the Siras, the Safa, or the Saba. Are you getting that? Safa or Saba star. The sun or the alpha and the omega, which emanated from wisdom. The sun generated the macro microcosmic order and animated it. Thus, the sun became the animating or inherent force of all reality, which would have been, been construed that the sun was to be worshipped. But remember, the sun comes from wisdom, Sophia, a manifestation of who? Ngai, the creator. Please do not make me sound like a lunatic when I'm giving them this message, Father. The sun generates the micro microcosmic order and animated it. Thus the sun became the animating or inherent force of all reality. Thus we live in the sun and the sun lives in us. Do you get it? For the father is in us through the manifestation of the knowledge, the Sophia, represented by the Safa or the Saba star. In other words, we are one and the same with the son, mother, father, who represent the two principles that constitute the ultimate reality. I wish that they are one, they are together as one, as I, as the father is in me, and as the father and I are one. The father is in me and I in the father. Case closed. Emancipate yourselves from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our minds. Have no fear for atomic energy. Because this is where it stops. They take basic African principles and make them look like the most complicated things to ever have been had. And why do they do this? All knowledge is inherent and is derived from human personality, which is the consubstantial with the ultimate reality, which is called Ngai, the one who was, is, and is to come. Strictly speaking, there is nothing that Ngai has done in your life and get this that you cannot do or are doing but some human beings and get this some human beings especially the Aryan race have misled others and subjected them to dummy religions in order to control them by saying that only the dummy gods they have created are the only ones capable of addressing poverty, diseases, underdevelopment. Thus, the African people have been reduced to a helpless, hopeless, and dependent species. The great challenge of you, sons and daughters of Muntu, is to decolonize your minds and enter the international dialogue on your own terms and we have to reject the balkanization or the balkanic themselves and denounce and distance themselves from it it's not just it's no longer about more wishful thinking expecting that the divine is going to send
only we can create the tipping scale so that the universe through its forces, there are positive and negative forces, both kept there for the balance because I would not question the first thought, the primal thought, the creator. So nini na nini somanda, gai morungu mwene nyara, tatana nzambi ya mazuru, the mighty one of the living and the living dead. Decolonize your mind, they're, they're basic principles, but because of what I've been trying to teach, the indoctrin indoctrination, like the Eucharist, you drink blood symbolically. That is, that is witchcraft. It goes to your stomach. You, you're tying down your solar plexus. And that is the only, that is the only force from, they call this their chakra or whatever, that, that abdominal region and the loins and what, that area where you get the gut feeling. Why do you think you, you, it's called a gut feeling? It's because whatever, whether, wherever that feeling comes, it is in tune with the primordial consciousness. And this is the only way we can decalcify the pineal gland, if at all, you do not want the ritual, the rituals done, but I tell you it's self-defeating because rituals got you into this, rituals will get you out of this. What, what, we, what, what we teach here will sound appeasing to your mind, but its power or its manifestation or its use will only become evident once you have undone what was done to you, son and daughter of men. Let us be wise in all our ways. Let us be wise in all our undertakings. Let us be wise in how we treat each other. Let's not look down upon each other. Do not say because you live in your high house in a foreign land that those on the continent are not your class. Pride comes before a fall. There's a tipping in the consciousness. I went to that mountain to beseech the guy of my ancestors because the gift he has allowed me, it becomes a burden sometimes. But a burden I carry also greatly. I have given up enough. Oh, I don't know. That is according to my thought, but there's still more I can give up for this truth. I keep breaking down the truth and I will keep breaking down the truth for those who accept it. There's no condition. Because I will never solicit support, but those who feel inclined can, like man has to live. But let us, let us be willing to unlearn because the information is there, the connection is there. It's no longer about pretending to know more than our pastors. I had a comment recently and I cannot, I have to keep reading this comment because the brother that wrote it really, I really needed it at a point of encouragement. And so I read, Bantu Re-Education TV, you and the others have taken a revolutionary act that so many of even the Bantu are not willing to look into. Many Bantus are comfortable doing their best to fit in this, to fit, the best to fit in this, their knowledge to their former church understanding and feeling good that their pastors know less than them. I wonder how many are willing to bridge the gap of knowledge that brings true deliverance in the physical. We are yet to be specific with our identity and direction and practice. Is that what the Bantus are ready to do? Hell no. 
we have our white man's careers, connections, wealth, futures, and legacies going in our political systems. We are yet to realize the precision of the most high when he says two thirds of us will be undone because of our ignorance. We cannot see the current selves changing. We think the white system will be blown off the table and our leaders will help us to transition to the kingdom. We can't see the upheaval that will create a new heaven and a new earth. May the almighty have mercy on us. Thy, thy young guy, thy, thy, thy young guy, thy, thy, thy young guy, thy. Where far for Kigo though? Gatua Wala, Aruda Jurohoro, Maroigua. Thy, thy young guy, thy, thy, thy young guy, thy, thy, thy young guy, thy. And so, Banaveto, I continue to ask you, Ungubani, who are you? Know thyself. Keep checking out the community page for lessons. Keep sending those emails for interactions, the sources, we love them, where we are right. We welcome the encouragement where we are wrong, we accept the correction. I do not claim an entirety to this truth, but I know something you don't. Until next time, Bayete Banaveto, Ingeta Makubenjalo, Dai. Play is like an earthen pot in the hands of a great porter. Play returns to play. Arise in the land of the living. Ipudi, Banabantu Production. <laughs> Yakubi Bana Bantu, Mutoto Wa Kibantu, Bana Vermuntu. Bana Vermuntu. <laughs> <laughs>